Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel, Ashley's Treasure. And I am dying to play with my um, Tim Holtz paper dolls. What we're going to make, just kind of like little embellishments and stuff. We're just going to go. I don't know. Everyone's saying hi. <laughs> my little man and my baby girl. Um, so I just like grabbed some stuff. Like this I got from Dollar Store, some rub-ons. Um, little one is having an emotional breakdown because she wants to play with all of these. <laughs> She was having fun stacking them, but th no, they're all yours. Mm -hmm. Wow, she went through an emotional breakdown. So apparently I'm going to work with these ones. And then with other, whatever I have around me, um, I also have this washi tape that I got from Timu that has some like newspaper and stuff in here. Some really cute stuff that I could possibly work with. Um, I don't really think I'm going to do stamping. But, um, yeah, whatever I got around me, I guess I'm going to use instead of what I was planning on using because she's just having too much fun stacking them. Grab your craft stuff and uh, craft along with me or I'll um, grab a snack and a drink and we'll see where this goes. So I'm starting off with some of Tim Holtz um, ephemera pieces. Um, they're from multiple different ones. I was looking for like the largest pieces that could be like the background to work off from. Um, so there's some, and then, um, of course, just the paper dolls. Um, I just kind of took a handful of them and just kind of seen which ones would go with what, like this little boy I thought would look cute with this clock. Um, there's this bingo piece. I thought this gentleman might will look interesting, if not this one, especially with those numbers, you know, for him to sit on. But yeah, I'm just going to keep going through these, just kind of see... Which one go what? I thought this one would be great because of the map. I thought like he looked like someone that would travel because being like he looked like he worked on trains or something. This little girl was so cute. Um, I really wanted to use this girl. I think is it this one that I used her on? I'm pretty sure I used her on a on one of them. Yeah, that one. Um, this one I really wanted to use, and I had the hardest time finding the right one for her. This one I thought was perfect because it says uh, nest and eggs and the lady was um, hanging on to flowers so it kind of gave like a spring feel to me. Um, this one looks like a book cover. I think it said beautiful wildflowers. And I ended up switching to her because I thought she looked really good on that with the colors. But yeah, I'm just going to keep going through and just kind of find a person to go with one of the pieces. I liked him because it looked like he traveled places as well. kind of looked masculine. I kind of liked him sitting on top of the globe. It looked like he was actually sitting on it. All right, so enough of that. Um, I'm going to get some fabric and cut out these flowers, but I thought that would be kind of boring to watch. So, um, yeah, I used my new Tim Holtz scissors that I really like that I got at Hobby Lobby on Clarence and... Um, I just fussy cut it out and I just kind of left a little bit of a border on the um, vines and the leaves because of how fine it was and being fabric. But yeah, I just kept adjusting it trying to figure out how I want it to fit on there with this lady. And finally, I was somewhat satisfied. So I got some smaller pieces of Tim Holtz, like ephemera pieces, and just kind of fiddling around trying to figure out um, how to make the little cluster. Um, I always tend to snip the corners a little bit so they're not so sharp edges. But it um, looks like I was kind of going with a red thing phase going on. I think it's because of that red flower there. And I also got the little labels, Tim Holtz labels. And then I started thinking, maybe I have too much red going on. So that's why I tried different color labels. And I started liking that more because I had way too much red going on. Um, so I'm going to for, um, start gluing on some um, trim on the left side. Um, this is from, I got at an antique store, you know, where they have like all separate booths. And um, this was in like a big glass jar just full of 
vintage um, lace in it. And I think this might have been like a bottom of a pillowcase or a skirt because of how long it was. Um, I had a lot of lace like that. But I really like the texture to this one. So I'm going to put down the left side. I'm just using my art glitter glue. It works pretty decent with fabric. And now I'm just going to be dabbing it onto the flowers that I cut out. I think that was originally from a tablecloth. If I remember, it was one that I got not that long ago. And it was just right there next to me. So I didn't put that one away yet. I love the flowers on it. And now I'm going to cut off the extra stem and leaf, but I'm going to keep the the um, other piece, pieces hanging off, like the red flower and stuff, I'm going to keep that hanging out. I'm not going to make it a straight rectangle. And then um, the closest ink that I had next to me was the frayed burlap distress oxide. And so I'm just going to distress everything, even the fabric flowers as well. I should have done that before I glued that down, but that's okay. And of course I have to do it on the side of the dolls because when they're cut, it kind of has like a white line around it. So I always um, like to distress that. And when I distress one thing, I have to distress everything. Okay, I'm going to cut that in half because I don't need to use the whole thing. So that way it'll come in handy for something else, I'm sure. Don't want it to go to waste. And it's time to start gluing everything down. And of course it got clogged. All better. <laughs> I think I end up gluing that on a little crooked. It's like the left side's like downwards and the right side's upwards. But I'm just gonna dab some glue here, trying to get the girl or lady on there. And yeah, there we go. I kind of fixed it a little. That was definitely crooked. And I still couldn't position her just right. <laughs> I had a lot of fun making these. I had no specific reason why I just you know sometimes you just gotta get some stuff out and just see where it goes and then that label needed something on it so I just got some um, of these stamps that I got from Timu I absolutely love it they just have some random numbers and stuff on there I've been using them a lot lately I'm using my versus fine black ink and just pressing it on there with my finger Nothing fancy, but yep, there's a little close up there. Um, next, I'm going to use this little girl. She's leaning on a globe, and there's more of the Tim Holtz ephemera. And this one, um, that's in my little blue container. Um, what is it? I think it's the botanical ones. And the, those ones, they come with butterflies and flowers. And they're kind of glossy in a way. Um, I was trying to find one to go with it, and I was having the hardest time. I could not make up my mind and I really wanted to use one of these butterflies. I think I was starting to have like a blue thing going on. I think it's because of the, that blue label. Um, I think that was from specimen label. I thought about putting one of the butterflies behind her and make it as wings, but I'm like, eh, no. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? I don't even remember. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I was having like a blue face going on because of that label. I think I started going with blue flowers and blue butterfly. I 
think I was starting to have like a color thing going on in my head. Is that too matchy matchy? about using this little 50 cent label or just like a regular label finally I'm like okay I need to start gluing things down so I'm gonna start gluing these down first on top of the little glow well it's not really little it's like the biggest part <laughs> but um, yes and then I realized, uh oh, I didn't distress them. So I'm trying to distress the edges, even though I already have them glued together. And then hurrying up, distressing the glow. And then I thought about using these leaves, which was the parts that I cut off from that fabric that I just fussy cut out from the last one, from those flowers. I thought that would look great on the like going from the bottom and then on the top from the right side like behind the girl and then I'm trying to position her just right so it looks like she's leaning on the globe I'm still trying to figure out where to put the top um, leaves. <laughs> I was going to say petals. And then I thought about using these blue flowers. I'm trying to position it just right. And it seems like I just could not get satisfied where I had it. It was driving me nuts. So it seemed like it needed another flower, like it wasn't covering enough. And so I was trying to find another one. And then finally I found one that was bigger and I think I ended up going with this one instead. And then I thought I would cut this leaf off and reposition it so that um, it won't because it's going to be covered up with the flowers so I thought I would put some more use to it because I thought it could use some extra leaves and so now I'm going to distress this one. And um, it does have a lot of details. I could have fussy cut all that white off, but since I want to do so many of them in such a short amount of time, I'm just distressing it and just kind of dabbing some ink on the white parts so it's not so white. All right, I finally got it where I wanted, so I'm going to start gluing that down. Now I'm trying to figure out where to put the two extra leaves from the fabric that I cut out. Um, there's still some paper stuck on the back of that one that I tore off. I don't know why I used that, like, um, 
what is it that orange -ish yellow color piece because it's like pretty much completely covered by the flowers you can hardly see it Um, but I finally found where I wanted to put those extra leaves. One down there, up there, and one on towards the bottom. And I'm gluing the flowers back down. And then I'm going to use a pencil and mark in the back of the girl um, where I need to add glue because I don't need glue on her feet and head because there's nothing to glue it onto. So I didn't want glue all over the place. Now it's time to glue the butterfly on. And then it still seemed like it needed something. So I got one of the labels again and used just a portion of one. Of course, I had to distress that as well. And then going to stick it kind of so it's like coming out from behind her towards the bottom, behind her skirt. It's kind of hard to get it up because it was already glued down, but I made it work. It's amazing how labels make such a big difference. And then I'm just kind of pressing it and there's a little close-up of it. And then here's more ephemera from Tim Holtz. I was trying to find ones that was more masculine kind of. Um, I really like this one, but it was just like too big. It took up like the whole clock. And I was trying to find one that he could sit on. I really like that stamp, that post postage stamp with the um, plane. I was afraid I was using too much of the same color again. I was using so much red, so I was trying to change it up a little. And I liked that more. I always try to use those arrows. I, I have the hardest time using those little pointed fingers. Other people use them all the time and just make it work, and yeah, I have the hardest time. So I thought about adding some more blue, possibly. That just was too big. I thought maybe this square one. Maybe this circular one. I was just having the hardest time trying to find something to stack up on there. I thought about the flag, but it just seemed like too much. And so I was looking through here thinking maybe I can find a leaf. Maybe that's what it needs is leaves behind him. So I grabbed two that I liked and going to fussy cut them off off camera because that's not exciting. Those little um, little paper I got from Timu as well. I really like those. They're quite small. They're like one by two inches or something. 
and there's quite a few in the little booklet. And I found out that's what I needed because the other ones were just pretty much squares and circles and it already had squares and circles and needed a different shape and that that separated that and it was a different color too like the because it already got red and blue and so now it's got green leaves. And then um, the one that he's sitting on, on the bottom left by his foot, um, it seems like it needed something stamped there. So again, I just got a random number, no specific reason, and just stamped that on there with my VersaFine ink as well. And that made a huge difference. It needed that. So there's another simple little cluster. I'm just kind of distressing a little bit more. And now it's time for this girl. Um, I had the hardest time with this one. Um, I made like a cluster right here on the bottom right. I really like these flowers. These are all from the Field Notes um, ephemera from Tim Holtz. I really like the colors that were going on in this. And I really like that flower with that label right there. Just then I wanted the girl on the left. And so... I needed stuff on that side as well because like her arm is like resting on something so I was trying to make a cluster on that side as well for her and I just was having the hardest time with it. I just kept going through different things trying to find something. I think that was like one of the specimen samples. But it was like too light so I thought about something oval and that just didn't look right. So then I started um, just a random book page. This one's like really aged, you know. Um, I did not coffee dye this one. It was just naturally like that. Um, so I thought maybe that's what I needed. Just something behind there and I thought it would be suiting since it's like a um, the background. It's like a book cover so I thought why not have book pages to go with it. Um, so I was just playing with that and trying to add that in with the clusters and there's so much on the bottom like I felt like it needed something towards the top right. So I'm trying to do like a little cluster up there as well. I thought about adding a butterfly up there. And I kept um, tearing more off from the book page, trying to make it smaller because it just seemed too big. And since the other two clusters had that, I thought the bottom right needed some too. Which actually wasn't bad, that cluster in the bottom right, like that. Um, so then it still needed something towards the top right, so I tried different labels. And since the one on the bottom right was blue, I thought maybe I could use a red one. Maybe I could use that to have her set her arm on. I just, I was having the hardest time. I could not make it work. So then I thought maybe I shouldn't, as much as I like the cluster in the bottom right, maybe that's what's distracting. It's just too much that that needs to be removed. And so I'm going to start distressing things. I really do like this butterfly. And that's when I realized that the book pages were not working. That instead of book pages, it needed lace. So I just used some random lace that I had sitting around, scrap pieces, and used that as instead, and that made a huge difference. So I'm adding, you know, the distressed oxide, the frayed burlap around here, trying to get that white off, and to um, distress it a little bit to blend in with everything else. It's hard to get in those little nooks and crannies. Granted, these are a little glossy, but sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad because it's like the ink doesn't instantly stick to it. But that's kind of a good thing because then you can kind of smear it and blend it more before it completely dries. And then same to this flower. And there was so much white in here, so I kind of dabbing it on a little bit light and trying to like blend it in more so it's not so white, white. That way it looks more aged. And now just distressing this little label. Um, I have like a red label and blue butterfly on the top right. And so behind her, the cluster on the bottom left, I got that red rose 
with the bouquet of flowers and then like a blue label. So I got the blue and red, but like opposite. All right, I think I'm done distressing now. And now it's time to start gluing everything on. Trying to make sure that that lace is gonna stick on well. And then I was going to glue this onto the girl first before gluing onto the book. And I realized I glued the wrong end. So I'm trying to get it just see where I need to add glue first. Oops, sorry. I hit the camera. Sorry about the wobbles. And now gluing her down. And just pressing everything down really good to make sure it's all stuck well. And now it's time to glue the top right. And this label moved on me right there and then it like kind of screwed up where I had it. So like everything came off. I'm trying to reposition the lace and the butterfly. And so finally I'm like, you know what? I just need to cut this extra piece off right now so it's out of the way. And now glue the butterfly on. Oh, and just dress that little spot too as well before I glue the butterfly on. It'd be a lot easier that way. And there's the end of that one. Next, I'm going to do this gentleman. Um, he looks like, I don't know, what do you call them? That works on the train. I can't remember the name for them. But he looks like the guy, you know, that would help the ladies to get on the train and tell them, like, when it's leaving, all you know, that always says, all aboard. You know, that's what he makes me think of. Uh, so that's why I love having that map there. And then I thought that poster stamp with the... Um, plane was perfect for him and then these I didn't want to use the part with Lincoln on there so I'm just using my little pokey tool and dabbing holes in it so that way it looks like it's perforated and just tear it apart just like regular postage stamp so it has that same look all around it it seemed like it needed another stamp I just could not figure out where to place it though And then this tag, um, I think it said airmail on it, and I thought that was well fitting. And I like the red, white, and blue to it, the vintage distress look, but I didn't need that whole tag. That tag is huge, so I just wanted to use a, a portion of it. I do that a lot. Like a lot of the stuff, like you don't have to use the whole piece as is, you can cut it apart and just use portions of it. Uh, but I switched to the label and then I switched to this piece like I was having the hardest time <laughs> making up my mind what looked right. I think I was overthinking it. I think I was I think there was too much red going on. Maybe that's what was bugging me. Yeah, because I just grabbed a blue one. I was I think I was looking for like a blue or a black one. And so then I went into field notes and I thought maybe there's one in there that would look better. And I found that bigger blue one that had like numbers on it, like specimen number on there. And I like that better. I think the other ones were just too small. And then I'm going to do like a little bit on the top left and I'm trying to use one of the little pointy arrows. Yay. So I feel like I got so many of them. I don't think I ever use those. And I'm just spreading the ink around trying to distress it. 
I thought it was kind of fitting for him because he looks like the one that would point like, hey, you need to enter here. This is your train here, you know? Go this way. <laughs> And now he needs to be distressed as well. Now it's time to distress the map as well. Now I'm trying to remember how I had this stacked. And there's a little close-up of that. Next is this lady, and I love this one because it said nest and eggs, and so it definitely gave you that spring feeling, so I'm like, you need flowers, and this lady was hanging on to flowers. And so I thought on the top left I should add a butterfly, and so I can keep going through, trying to find the right flower. This one I really liked more than the other rose. I think that pink looked really good with it. Um, that was, again, the, I think the, what do they call it, the botanical ones? That package has all um, flowers and butterflies. But I keep switching through um, the field notes. The butterflies through that. I thought this green one actually would have worked pretty good. But yeah, I'm going through all of them. I'm so picky trying to find just the right butterfly. Like that orange one could have worked. This blue one could have worked. Even that green one, that one's really pretty. I think I was going like dressing out over butterflies, so that's why I started playing with the other pieces. And then I started thinking, what if I do use one of these butterflies that's sideways and have it set on the rose? And I like that. And so, of course, it needed a label. Um, and so instead of having multiple clusters, I was just kind of doing it all behind her. So it was more towards the right. So again, just, just distressing everything. Trying to get all those little nooks and crannies and blending it in. And then same with this rose. I would have preferably cut it and all that white off, but um, it is kind of thick and kind of hard when it's that thick. So I'm just kind of dabbing and blending it so it doesn't look so white and looks more aged and blends in with everything. And then there was, um, because of how fine it is, um, there is like a border around it and that was kind of bugging me. So um, I kind of sniffed that off, especially the antennas and the, the tail of the wings. Um, that was really bugging me. So I cut off all that extra pieces that was not a part of the butterfly. So now I'm going to try lining everything back up and start gluing them down soon. I did not want to cover that nest and I realized that flower was too far down. So I was trying to fix that. That black um, ephemera piece is perfect because it like fit right where the line was. Alright, now it's time to start gluing it down. 
but then I started thinking some of this um, lace, I think it's tatting, is it tatting? Um, would look great on the bottom. So I'm going to glue this black piece on first and then have the little tatting trim on the very bottom. And it does have a little bit of H to it. And I was thinking about adding some on the top as well. So then I thought, no, that's too much. Having on top and bottom, I just need it on one side. So again, I'm taking my pencil out and drawing where I need to glue her down. And that also helps me line it back up exactly where I want it to be. Trying to get the glue off the table. <laughs> And then I was still debating about the butterfly. Yes, I could not make up my mind. I found another one that was off to the side. And um, I kind of ended up liking the smaller one because the other one just seemed too big. I think that's what was bugging me. It was just too big. And I thought the smaller one fit that flower better. So here's a little close up of it. Next is this little girl. Oh my gosh, I love this one. Um, I was going through these little... Um, was like one by two little piece of paper. These ones were like flower specimens. And I wanted to find a little flower for her to hang on to because her left hand looks like she's supposed to hang on to something. And I thought a flower would be really cute. And I thought this was a good size for her. I was looking for something small like this with a thin stem to stick into her hand. So here I'm just little kind of fussy cutting it a little bit but the stem I kept a little bit thicker so that it had more to hang on to because it has a very thin stem. And so I'm getting my little pokey tool again and just poking a little hole in her hand so um, I can slide the stem through there so it looks like she's actually hanging on to it and there it is just like putting thread through a needle <laughs> oh I love it it's so cute and so since that flower was like a had like purple and pink I went to the um, Tim Holtz ephemera I think this is like the palette painted palette or something like that that had like that color thing going on um and again don't use the whole piece if you don't want to you can cut it apart and here i just wanted the number so i just cut the number off because i needed some pink and i thought that fit perfect right there um then i thought i'll get my little fisker trimmer to get some straight lines because i cannot cut straight for the life of me and i thought this little piece would work I have no idea what it says, but I just want it because the, the um, printing on there, the writing, the color. I thought it needed more pink. I thought that could fit right there. So then I thought that's too much of the same pink. So then I thought about this piece and I started to wonder, what if I just used half of it? What if I just use those numbers on the bottom? So again, I got my trimmer out, cut that in half and I thought about using that right there, which I do like. But um, I started wondering, what if I use this other side instead? And I really like that piece. And then I started thinking, it needs more flowers. So I went to the, the botanical pieces and I found this purple flower that I really liked. And of course I needed a butterfly as well. And so I think I knew where this was going. So I thought it was time to start to dress, the, to dress distressing everything. Even this tiny little piece. I even tried to distress that um, hole in there. And again, distressing all that white around it to blend in. Just 
kind of smearing it around. Trying to line everything back up. Oops, she's dropping her flower. I was definitely having a pink and purple thing going on in this one. And then I found this other butterfly and I love the colors in there. I just thought it went really well with this flower. And plus it kind of has some a different color than just pink and purple. This one has like this bluey turquoise color going on. So I'm just dressing that one really quick to add on with the rest. And I kind of went over as I thought maybe an eraser will help to erase it. And it didn't really, but I'm like, oh, well, it's good enough. It'll still work. It's still beautiful. So then I was hem hawing, hesitating, should I change it? No, I'm going to stick with this one. Just take it. Oh, and then I forgot to distress that tiny little flower. And then I also add some of that trim on there as well. Then I realized, oh my gosh, it's getting late. There was three more that I had together, which I, I end up not doing. I realized that I had like 10 of them lined up ready to go but I ended up just doing um was a seven so I did this one this one the man um this girl this little girl and this man and then the first one I started off with which one did you like the most the one with the purple flowers the pink rose the traveling man the red flower the other man the blue flower or the wild child lady I think this purple one was my favorite I hope this gave you some inspiration. If so, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and I will talk to you later. Bye.